To continue in our course about design patterns we will now talk about the repository pattern, first let's talk about what is the repository pattern, the repository pattern is a design pattern commonly used in Laravel applications to abstract the data access logic from the rest of the application. It provides a clean and organized way to interact with data storage usually a database and allows for easier testing, maintenance, and switching of data sources. Let's go through an example of implementing the repository pattern in Laravel. Let's take an example so we can understand it more. First we have the article model that contains to feeables the title and content. Next we will create a new file called article repository inside the repository folder that we created. Now what does this file do? The article repository encapsulates the data access logic for the article model. It provides methods for retrieving all articles, getting an article by ID, creating, updating, and deleting articles. The repository is bound to the service container in a service provider, ensuring that it can be easily injected into controllers or other classes. So we will go to our root service provider and bind the article repository with the article model ensuring that it can be easily injected into controllers or other classes, now let's see our article controller, the article controller uses the article repository to handle data access in its methods. This promotes a separation of concerns, making the controller focused on handling HTTP requests while delegating data access to the repository. By implementing the repository pattern, you achieve better organization of your code, maintainability, and flexibility in case you need to switch data sources or make changes to the underlying data access logic. It also facilitates unit testing since you can easily mock the repository in tests. Now let's talk about the pros and cons about using the repository pattern. First we have the abstraction of data access logic, but what does that mean? It means the repository pattern provides a clean separation between the application's business logic and the details of how data is stored and retrieved. This abstraction allows developers to focus on the application's core features without being concerned about the underlying data source. Second we have testability, repositories make it easier to write unit tests for your application. Since the business logic interacts with the repository interface rather than the actual data source, e.g., database, you can easily create mock repositories for testing without relying on the actual database. Third, we have flexibility in change management. The repository pattern makes it easier to switch or change the underlying data source. If your application initially uses a database, you can later switch to a different database or storage mechanism without affecting the business logic. Fourth, we have centralized data access logic. That means that with a repository, data access logic is centralized in one place. This can lead to more maintainable and scalable code, as developers know where to find and update data-related code. And for our final pro, we have the easier code maintenance. Since data access code is encapsulated in the repository, making changes to the data access logic, e.g., adding caching, changing database queries, can be done in a single location without affecting the rest of the application. Now we have talked about the good things about using the repository pattern, but about its drawbacks and problems. Our first problem from using it is the increased complexity for simple applications. For small or straightforward applications, introducing a repository layer might be seen as over-engineering. It adds an extra layer of abstraction that may not be necessary, potentially making the code base more complex. Our second problem is the potential performance overhead, because in some cases, the introduction of a repository layer might introduce a slight performance overhead. Directly accessing the database or data source may be more efficient in simple scenarios. Third, we have learning curve for new developers. Developers who are new to the code base may need time to understand the additional layer introduced by the repository pattern. This can potentially slow down onboarding for new team members. And for our fourth problem, which is boilerplate code, depending on the implementation, the repository pattern might introduce some boilerplate code, especially if you need to create interfaces, implementations, and bindings in a service container. This can lead to more code to maintain and understand. And for our last problem and not a silver bullet, that means while the repository pattern can be beneficial in many scenarios, 
it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. There are cases where it might not be the most appropriate design choice, and careful consideration should be given to whether the benefits outweigh the drawbacks for a particular application. And those are the pros and cons for the repository pattern The decision to use the repository pattern should be based on the specific needs and complexity of your application. For larger and more complex applications, or those with changing data sources, the benefits of separation of concerns, testability, and maintainability often outweigh the drawbacks. However, for smaller applications, introducing a repository layer might be unnecessary and could add unnecessary complexity. As with any design pattern, it's important to weigh the pros and cons in the context of your specific project. That's it for our video. If you want more design patterns videos check the video on your screen, and don't forget to like and subscribe.